Um, so I'm excited this morning to talk about, and as as I kind of first introduced uh, back in the fall at our AI World uh, conference, to talk about our uh, the next iteration of our RM5 um, next generation RMUs, and uh, that's in the form of our uh, our new RM540 test point monitor. And then we also have the RM520 uh, interruptible bond monitor. And I have uh, one of the units in my hand right here, and I'll uh, I'll go ahead and dive in. So the, the RM540 uh, test point monitor, and, and it also includes a grade level uh, test point option, um, is really, you know, it, it's, it's a very fundamental, uh, very simple uh, monitoring device that you can put at the top of a te uh, test post um, along your, your pipelines. And um, it has a single structure uh, input. Uh, you can connect two reference cells to it. And the, the use case for this would be if you wanted to have redundant reference cells uh, in the ground, uh, maybe to compare their, uh, their performance, or if you wanted to have a single reference cell in the ground, and then um, times when, when a technician or you know, uh, someone out in the field wants to walk up and take a measurement with a uh, with a portable reference cell, they could you know touch on touch on the input for that second reference cell input and and take that measurement um, using uh, using the mobile app uh, to read that measurement. So these devices, all of these devices, uh, come with a uh, you can purchase them with a three year data plan, and that's with no overages. And this is actually a model that we're moving to for for all of our um, our remote monitoring products is uh, is a no overages um, uh, kind of schema. Um, and in terms of critical specs, one of the biggest things on this is, you know, we intend or we, we foresee uh, a lot of these units being installed in the field and, and you as users want them to be installed in the field for a long time without having to service them. You want them to do their job and all you, you know, you get the benefit of just seeing the data without having to worry about them. And so we've really, um, focused a lot of attention onto the, um, onto the battery life of these units. And this device in its, in its typical use case has, um, a spec 10 year battery life. Uh, and then at the point where you do need to replace those batteries 10 years down the road, it's a field replaceable system. You remove the cap from this and, uh, and replace the batteries with off the shelf, uh, lithium ion uh, AA batteries. Um, the the inputs are suitable for you know for the measurement of um, of just typical pipe to soil readings as well as you know a little bit higher voltage than that. Uh, and this comes with a, a typical DC accuracy of um, plus or minus one percent with a little bit of offset uh, at one millivolt. And as you see in the bottom left hand corner of, of the screen there, that's that's a, a picture of the grade level kind of mechanical enclosure option that uh, is available for this. And I'll touch on this uh, a little bit more in, in an upcoming slide. But those are the two variants you kind of see there. One in the upper right hand corner sits atop a test post. And then in the bottom left hand corner, um, that's what would go um, subgrade. <laughs> All right. And then the RM520 is our uh, single bond, uh, interruptible bond monitor. Um, and again, this is another device that can sit atop a test post. And the uh, the REL2502 uh, solid state relay is a new solid state relay designed uh, exclusively for, for this product. And um, it is a, uh, it's a solid state relay that uh, its dimensions allow it to, to basically go down into the test post beneath the, beneath the RMU. Um, it has a two structure um, input system so that you could be measuring, um, you know, if you have two, you know, a crossing of two pipelines, you could be measuring the pipe to soil on each of those pipelines, your own, and then as well as a, you know, a foreign pipeline um, that, that is bonded at that site. Um, the imp on monitor, uh, because the nature of the application involves it calling in more frequently than like a standard test point, as well as just the function of the of the relay, this unit has a five year battery life. Um, and of course, there's, you know, relative to test points that have a 10 year battery life, there's a lot fewer of the uh, the imp on um, monitors that would be out in the field. And so um, so that's another, uh, I guess, adder to the five year battery life. Similar um, DC and AC accuracy specs uh, and, and input ranges. And from an installation standpoint, you know, both of these devices, when you, uh, when you install them on an existing test point, or if you purchase one of our Titan, uh, Triton uh, test posts, uh, we provide 
Uh, we provide an interface cable to, to easily uh, interface with what you're used to seeing at the top of a test post with kind of the vertical vertical plate with banana jacks. Um, we we are providing a you know an easy installation um, you know approach to that. So both of these um, new products uh, are are going to be released in both satellite and cellular options, and you know you you have test sites that are out in the middle of nowhere, maybe away from cell towers, and, and you, you just can't get cell reception everywhere that you need to. And so we are providing a satellite option for those locations. And one of the, um, one of the benefits of our newer RM5 architecture is that we're now using the Iridium satellite network. And this is, uh, this is you know, a low Earth orbit satellite. So there's, there's always satellites moving through the sky and visible in the sky. And so it's it results in a much more reliable, uh, consistent, um, you know, fast data transfer um, satellite network. On the on the cellular side, sometimes you're near set a, a cell tower, you're you're in an urban area and you you want the benefit of a lower cost uh, communication option. And so we are providing uh, also an AT&T cellular option um, that, you know, has has wide coverage for for a lot of the areas you're using, and it is again a lower cost option in terms of the um, in terms of the unit itself, and then in terms of the um, of the subscription plan because of the lower cost of data transmission over cellular. And both of these are uh, are two way communication, um, so they will report the data to you, and then you can also program them via Bullhorn Web. To comment a little bit more on the Iridium versus kind of what we traditionally done in our in our legacy RMU products, such as the 4211 and 4251 uh, DC um, you know DC test point um, units, previous uh, or legacy units have used what's referred to as a geostationary satellite uh, constellation, and this is where there's there's a satellite that sits you know above the equator in the same spot in the sky, and it it kind of moves with with the Earth and devices that you would like to be communicating over satellite, you have to be very conscious about where they are located and making sure that there's no, nothing blocking them, making sure that they have a view to the sky in the direction where that satellite is. And sometimes this can create complications. Sometimes it actually um, limits or prohibits the use of a satellite device um, at, a, at a site because uh, your device can't get the visibility it needs to that satellite. Um, with our newer generation uh, of ARM, RM5 units, um, the low Earth uh, orbit satellite constellation has a network of satellites that are constantly moving through the sky and, and sharing and handing off the satellite connection from your device. And so um, it's a much more reliable, much more consistent um, possibility that you will have uh, visibility to a, a satellite. It's basically if you if you can see the sky, there's going to be a satellite there for you to communicate with, and and these uh, you know this network is is in theory it's you know it's able to to get a satellite connection anywhere in the world. Other notable features uh, with um, with these devices, uh, one of them that I want to highlight is um, with with like the test point monitor. Um, we don't uh, we we cannot do interruption on this. It's uh, you know it's a, a voltage measurement device uh, and a reporting device. Um, however, if you have an interruption happening on your asset, on your pipeline that the test point monitor is connected to, uh, you'd like to be able to get a, you know, a trustworthy measurement if there's an interruption happening. And so what we've done is uh, we've enabled a feature in this device where you can program the device with a known interruption cycle that'll be happening. So let's say, you know, in a, in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna be uh, running an interruption, running a survey uh, during a, you know, a certain time span. I can program that time span into my device uh, so that it is aware of that interruption cycle happening. And if, uh, if the device is programmed to also wake up on its routine uh, call to, to take a measurement and phone that data in, 
um, it will take an instant off measurement. So it, it assumes that there's an interruption happening. It'll take an instant off measurement and deliver that instant off reading to you. Otherwise, it will just return a, uh, you know, kind of a standard pipe to soil reading. Um, and the programmability of those uh, those interruption style cycles is done within Bullhorn Web and, and transmitted to the device ahead of when your interruption uh, survey would be occurring. Um, I, I touched briefly on it at the beginning with the um, the RM540 uh, and its grade level enclosure. This is going to be available um, only in our cellular option, uh, just based on uh, the constraints. Uh, number one, the constraints around having a unit in the ground and um, a lot more likelihood of blockages uh, being there to the sky. Uh, but then also, uh, you know, the kind of targeted application for a grade level would be in, in urban areas, uh, roadways and, and things like that, where uh, it's much more likely that a cellular connection would be available. Um, we will be offering a cast iron uh, valve box that has a plastic insert lid. So that plastic insert lid is, is particularly important because it's going to give uh, the ability for the uh, communication signals to pass through. If it was a cast iron lid, this would just be a you know a Faraday cage that that no signals could pass out of or or into the device. And so another another kind of application that we foresee uh, maybe in smaller quantities would be uh, users who have a field, uh, you know, say say a farmer who has a field where they can't have a test post or just some other place where a test post is impractical to have, and it, it's a, a better fit to have a, a grade level solution. Um, that's also another application that you could consider uh, this device. Uh, and then the the other notable feature here is um, for those of you who are familiar with our our Triton test post. Um, more commonly in the past, it's been paired with our RM4210 and RM4250 um, AC monitors. We now have iterations of this Triton test post that have compatibility with our RM540 and RM520, and those will be uh, released at the same time as uh, as all the 540 and 520. So you will be able to um, not only install these devices on test points, test posts, that you already have installed, but you could also purchase the whole system, the whole setup from us in the form of the Triton test post. And it would include all the uh, all the structure cables that you would need, reference cells, and uh, and again, all of the interface cabling that's, that's needed for that. And you simply pop the device on top and uh, uh, check it with your, your mobile app, and then you're off and going to the next one. And it would, it wouldn't be good for me to not mention that the programmability, the configurability of all of these devices uh, has and will continue to be enabled by our Bullhorn Tools mobile app and Bullhorn Web. And so uh, all these devices uh, upon upon their release will also have, uh, have their capability of programming and verification in the field. Uh, with with the the mobile app, so the mobile app will release with um, with the ability to communicate with these devices, and the and the mobile app is really oriented towards that field installation uh, process. So you get the device uh, wired up, installed on the top of the test post, and then you can do all the initial checks uh, while you're out in the field before you leave the site, rather than discovering when you get back into the office that oh it's uh, you know something might have been blocking its view or oh I didn't have a, a cable wired up properly. Um, that's really kind of the key um, you know the key usage uh, for Bullhorn tools. You can also do some programmability of schedules, but most of the scheduling work, most of the detailed scheduling work that you would do with these devices, is going to happen in Bullhorn Web. Um, one of the key things that I want to point out on the Bullhorn tools is we do have you know when you first bring up the device and you connect to it via Bluetooth, it will give you an indication of um, of the signal quality. And that's a really key thing to, to check um, when you're installing these. You not only see an indication of the signal quality, which we are making an enhancement in the newer release of Bullhorn tools. Previously, we had kind of an indication that had, had numbers associated with the power level and, and all that. And you kind of had to to pull out your decoder ring to understand what that meant. Well, we've simplified that for you. And we've taken that 
you know, kind of those, those metrics, those numbers and what they mean and translated that into something that's easy to understand for you. Is it a poor signal? Is it a, you know, is it a good signal or is it a great signal? We will give you that indication so that you have an idea of what's going on. And then you can also send a test packet um, from the field upon installation that would, uh, that would actually confirm for you what we're telling you in terms of the signal quality that yes, you can actually uh, send and, and receive back confirmation of, um, uh, of the communication of the device. All right. And with that, I've left a few minutes here for, for some questions and any other commentary that, that AI folks would like to add. Um, but again, uh, we're really excited to get this out. We're looking to have it out this quarter, uh, all of these devices. Um, and so reach out to your, uh, your sales uh, representative. Um, our, we're in the final stages of, of finalizing all of our pricing right now. So you'll be able to get that information soon. And then um, I believe we now have the product pages live on the website where you can access uh, the data sheets for even more detail from what I've uh, communicated here, um, as well as uh, we, ha we have training videos that will be uh, coming. Some of those have already been completed and, and are, are really showing you the ease of installation of all this. So a lot of a lot of content available, um, you know, a, as of today, and uh, I'm really excited to see uh, to see these devices out in the field. I uh, really appreciate it, Andrew. Just for some clarification, Andrew, could you hold that test point up again? Um, this is this is what I mean. We we are really excited to be able to put this uh, design out in the market. Um, we've got a lot pretty of pretty small. I think I need to customers. move it closer to the camera. <laughs> So um, what, one thing uh, we did embed um, the data sheets and they have links to QR codes, which take you to the product pages. We'll follow this up uh, um, in an email as well. Uh, one question that came up uh, from Brad was asking about, um, you know, if you're on a, a data plan that, that enables it, what's the, what's the maximum fast sampling rate um, for the test point monitors, Andrew? Um, these test point monitors, um, they, they're designed for like single, um, you know, single measurement uh, return. We have some products coming down the pipeline uh, that will have data logging uh, functionality, but these particular devices are, are more on the side of, uh, you know, single measurements, uh, instantaneous uh, kind of measurements. We think of these as, uh, you know, low cost, uh, low maintenance test points to handle uh, some of those um, areas that are maybe uh, you know, hard to reach. Um, and we definitely have uh, products uh, that will socialize here very quickly. Um, to uh, uh, give you guys all those data logging capabilities that everyone's asking for. We're very, very keen on listening to the market. So please uh, keep pitching us all of the, the, the meet the needs and the meet to, to meet and we'll uh, keep hopefully designing products behind for you guys. So um, I don't see a lot of other questions coming in, but um, if anyone wants to ask a question, it's a great time, happy to answer. And we can always follow up after as well. Okay, well, uh, again, if anything comes in the chat, we'll, we'll get to it. But uh, just to give a kind of a heads up, uh, we have our next virtual brew in February. Uh, one of the things we're going to be going into, and then obviously, you know, with virtual brew, we always want to be able to go through best practices, training, technical topics that help uh, everyone in the field. We're going to be going through our, our platforms and best practices for doing ECDA monitoring. So this is uh, CIS, DCBG, um, all those type, type of capabilities using our tools and, and also... Um, how we can, you know, optimize reporting and the best practices in our, our platforms like PCS and Survey Manager. Brad, I see you raised your hand there. Happy to answer anything you have. Let me just unmute myself first. Um, there's a spec sheet that was provided in the chat uh, by Justin, and it uh, shows environmental specs minus 30C to plus 60C and zero to 95% humidity. Uh, I've had some experience with condensation uh, forming on uh, on products regardless. So, um, you know, the place you, you might get high humidity, but as the temperature drops, then you get condensation inside the testation heads and, and on the circuitry and everything else. Um, how about how I'm going to say how bad is that? <laughs> That's the simplest way I can ask that question. Like, I mean, understanding that, that you know, there, there could be moisture. If it forms into droplets, is that pretty bad for the circuitry? Or is it, you know, it's got some sort of robustness built into it that 
that uh, you know won't have significant negative impacts uh, unless it was like fully submerged or something like that. Yeah, I'll field this one, Justin. Um, no, that's a great question, and it's something that's come up, um, you know, on on even our legacy RMUs. And I'll I'll tell you that the the testing that we do in engineering, um, we have we have these massive um, humidity and temperature chambers in our engineering lab where we put these units through the paces in terms of uh, the temperature ranges. We actually, you know, test beyond our temperature ranges that we publish um, to, to make sure that we've got, you know, headroom. But those same temperature chambers uh, uh, also can provide a humidity uh, environment to, to really test out the influence of humidity and kind of condensing humidity uh, to be to be more specific. Um, along with that, we do uh, extensive field testing of these units to actually see them in the real world because it's one thing to test uh, these devices uh, through the paces in the lab, but it's a, an entirely different thing to test them out in the field where where they're actually being used. Um, so yes, um, that is a that is a very good point uh, on you know on the humidity being an effect uh, having an effect on these devices or, or any electronic devices. And, um, and we make sure to design uh, for that, for sure. One thing to also mention on this, if uh, you're using our foreign bond monitor, um, that comes with our, uh, you know, AMP uh, Innovation of the Year Award winning solid state relay, which is fully potted as well. So there are multiple elements here. So we're talking about a full epoxy coating to help prevent um, things like humidity and buildup inside of the circuitry. So um, we obviously do want to design for, I mean, these are buy and for corrosion. So they have to meet some of, they have to meet those requirements. Um, so, uh, well, we'll continue expanding the data sheets and continue expanding information based on, you know, uh, our field trials and everything that we're going on that are actually ongoing now and just making sure we get all that information out uh, into the market. So, um, hopefully that answers a little bit what you're looking for, Brad. Is there anything else we can maybe clarify for you? Yeah, actually, you answered my question very well. Thank you. Um, I have another one regarding the temperature, uh, lower temperature limits, uh, minus 30 degrees C. Um, well, I live in Canada, so we had about a week and a half of that um, last week and the, and the week prior. Um, so understanding that this equipment will be subjected to temperatures that are colder than that. And sometimes, you know, might get down to minus 40, minus 45. Um, but, you know, it tends not to stay there for too terribly long. However, I, you know, in, in my life, I've seen three weeks where the high temperature was minus 30. So, so mm -hmm. when, when the equipment is subjected to those cold temperatures for, you know, let's say a week or two weeks, um, you know, what sort of an impact does that have? Does it, does it just like the system freezes up and, and, uh, and it, you know, you can't use it or, or, um, you know, is it still functional, but may not be reliable for, for data or, um, you know, and, uh, and I guess the associated question would be, how does that impact battery life potentially? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, I think, I could get you a lot more detailed answer uh, from our engineering folks. I'd, I'd like to to discuss with them on you know some of the to answer some of the questions you got. But I will say that um, the the published temperature range for operation um, is largely driven by the batteries and and their operation, their function, their uh, capacity uh, across a temperature range. Um, the rest of the electronics, not so much. Um, I mean, they are they are influenced by it. Um, uh, for sure, but but again, the battery um, you know the battery operation is going to be most influenced by that. Um, but I'd like to follow up with you on specifics of what that looks like. You know, what would the symptoms be of you know a device operating outside uh, of that, and and you know can it can it recover appropriately and and so forth. So um, I, I will follow up with you, uh, Brad, and um, and answer that question. Okay, I appreciate it. And if anyone else can add anything uh, that, that maybe I'm uh, missing, uh, please do, uh, AI team. I know well, I good day. So, oh. so I just see a question from William asking about cellular network operations, especially in places like, uh, so is it, uh, so, so what are the cellular carriers for the LTE um, that we're going to the market with, Andrew? Yeah, we are going to market with, uh, with AT&T. And, um, you know, although we are open to discussing, you know, other carriers, maybe international, you know, or 
at some point as well. We're open to that. We're, there's no plans for that right now. Um, for, for any areas where, you know, a satellite or sorry, any areas where um, there is not AT&T cellular coverage, um, the, um, the default would be to, to look at a satellite unit. And that Iridium satellite unit, um, being that they're low, low orbiting mesh networks, um, they have a, a, just an incredible span. Uh, but for anyone that has any questions or concerns about any type of coverage, what you can do is always reach out to us, um, engage with your sales account manager, um, and provide us with lat longs at the locations, and we can provide you with a heat map of which one might work better than the other, maybe a satellite unit or a cellular unit. So we're always, we're always here to be a, a resource to answer those questions and try to give you what the right uh, configuration is as well. All right. Well, I think uh, for no other questions, um, you know, we're happy to do follow up and to make sure that we're um, uh, doing our part and we'll keep getting everyone updated. And we're really excited to, to have this product released. And um, again, you have the, the, um, the data sheets and we'll follow up with some communications and touch base with everyone who's asked questions on here um, independently. So, uh, Cole, Christiane, if we are all good, um, I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Um, we're really excited to uh, see you out in the market and uh, please let us know any way we can help or be a support. Thanks, Thanks everyone. very much. Have a great rest of your week and a great weekend. You as well. Thanks. Thanks everybody.